five, seven, eight years ago, a Bolzano medal from the Czech Academy of Sciences, which is a very honorable thing. By the way, I forgot at some stage to mention this uh, Marianne Fabian, who spoke at our seminar earlier, also got this medal about three or four years ago. Okay, so uh, I, I hope this is not the last medal usually you are being awarded. And uh, now Irzy is going to talk about practical things, about applied stuff. So he is doing theoretical stuff and also applied stuff. And this applied stuff is from mechanics, column friction, and how to solve contact problems using uh, semi-smooth star Newton method. So star is not accidental there, as I remember. This is a new uh, notion introduced recently. And Yezhi is going to probably tell us about this new notion apart from just Newton method. Please, Yezhi. Okay, <clears throat> so many thanks for the introduction. And of course, many thanks to the whole organizer team of this respective, respected uh, seminar for giving me the opportunity to have a, to give a talk now. So <clears throat> uh, this talk is a, in a certain sense, a continuation of uh, the talk which was given by my co-author, Helmut Freer uh, at the Wombat workshop some months ago. And I apologize at those who actually uh, participated at this um, workshop because you will see some of the slides for the second time. So I'm sorry, but not all, of course. This, uh, so this talk is a, a joint work of four authors. Apart from Helmut, uh, one of the co-authors is Michael Mandelmeier who is a PhD student of Helmut, and also my colleague Jan Waldman from the Czech Academy of Sciences, the same institute as I am working. And uh, so I will move to the next slide. And uh, on top, you will see actually the main problem uh, which will be discussed in this talk. Namely, we are given a closed graph multifunction mapping Rn into sets of Rn. And we are looking for such a vector x, x such that the image of x in the mapping of f contains the zero vector. So it's a fairly general <coughs> problem having plenty of applications. And uh, I will, as already mentioned by Alex, uh, discuss the application to a difficult mechanical problem. The outline of the talk is as follows. After a very short introduction, I will recall also very quickly some basic notions from variation analysis. Then I will recall the notion of semi-smoothness star mentioned, of course, in the talk of Helmut and uh, present this semi-smooth star Newton method uh, <clears throat> more in detail. And then uh, I will describe the model of, used for uh, our mechanical problem because this problem can be modeled in different ways and describe uh, the implementation of the semi-smooth star Newton method to it. And finally, I will present some numerical tests and end up with a conclusion. Okay, so <clears throat> assume, for instance, uh, that uh, we are facing a generalized equation in the sense of Robinson. 
so that this multifunction capital F, which I mentioned before, amounts in fact to the sum of a single valued mapping, small f, and a multifunction capital Psi. We assume that this F is smooth, single valued and smooth, and capital Psi is a closed valued multifunction. So in the year 79, uh, Josephy actually recommended or de uh, described a Newton type method for the solution of uh, this type of problems, uh, which is in fact very simple. Uh, if we are currently sitting at, at the iterate XK, then instead of the original problem, we linearize the single valued part, which is here, and leave the multi-valued part untouched and solve this problem, arriving thus at the new iterate, say, x k plus one. Uh, the drawback of this method is actually uh, immediately, uh, <coughs> it's clear because in most problems, this, uh, the solution of, of this approximated or linearized problem is also very difficult. For instance, if the original problem uh, <coughs> models a non uh, the original generalized equation corresponds to a nonlinear complementarity problem, then we face here a linear complementarity problem, which is also difficult by, say, less difficult than the original one. Nevertheless, this, this method was rather successful. And for instance, the well-known SQP method for the solution of nonlinear programs is more or less based on this theoretical development. And now in the literature, you can find various variants of, of this original Joseph E. Newton method. For instance, in one of them, you can use, you can work with F being only Lipschitz, not necessarily uh, smooth. And in some other variants, you can find also an approximation of this multivalued part. Nevertheless, uh, they, in these uh, new developments, you find uh, mostly approximations which are based on the graphical derivative of this multifunction Psi, whereas in the semi-smooth star Newton method, which I will present, the, the approximation is different. Okay, so let me move to the next item. Uh, I think I don't need to go uh, into details. Uh, we will use the standard tangent cone. So given a set and closed set A and a point X bar from this set, we will be working with the standard bulligan or tangent contingent cone to A. Then since we are in finite dimensions, the, the regular normal cone is given as, a, as the negative polar of the tangent cone. And finally, we will be working with the limiting normal cone to A at X bar, which is in fact uh, the outer set limit of the mapping, which assigns X the regular normal cone. <clears throat> Here I have some simple illustrations. So if your set A is given just by these two half lines and we are sitting in this point X bar, then the tangent cone looks exactly in the same way, but the vertex is now at the origin. The green ortent is the regular normal cone and this blue set consisting from the axis and this ortent, northwest ortent 
it is the limiting normal cone. And since we will be working with mappings, so we will we will use the, the this actually this cone cones which I have presented before, and in this way we we get two so-called generalized derivatives. This is first the graphical derivative. So we are given a multifunction f and a point x bar y bar from its graph. Then the graphical derivative is defined in this way via the tangent cone to the graph of f. I apologize here, I should have x bar y bar, not u bar v bar. It's a typo. And <clears throat> the limiting or Modukovic co-derivative is constructed in this way. And the basis is now the, the limiting normal cone to the graph of F computed at the point X bar Y bar. And this minus we have here in order to ensure that if you face a <clears throat> smooth mapping, then the co-derivative amounts, in fact, the adjoint Jacobian of this mapping. Okay, now I will recall two notions coming for uh, actually dealing with stability of multifunctions. The first definition comes from Robinson. And so we say that a set valued mapping F Mapping Rn into Rm is metrically regular. If uh, this <coughs> inequality here metrically regular around a point from the graph with modulus kappa, provided uh, there is some non-negative scalar kappa and two neighborhoods u of x bar and v of y bar, such that this distance the distance of X uh, from the inverse image of Y in the mapping F can be estimated in this way by the distance of Y to the image F of X. And this estimate holds for all pairs of elements X and Y coming from the, uh, from the, this Cartesian product of neighborhoods. And uh, this uh, notion can be a little bit strengthened. This comes, uh, th this, the first one was not associated with Robinson, I apologize. This uh, definition goes back to Jean-Pierre Aubin. But the second one, this is, has been actually proposed by Robinson in 1980. And uh, in fact, uh, here one requires that <clears throat> the inverse mapping f uh, minus one to minus one has a localization around point around this point in question y bar x bar, which is nowhere multivalued. So it is metrically regular in the sense of Oban, and in addition, this inverse has such a property. And uh, for the metric regularity, we will make use of the Mordukovic criterion, which is written here and says that uh, F is metrically regular around the point, uh, around the point X bar, Y bar, if and only if this condition expressed in terms of the limiting co-derivative of F is fulfilled. Fine. And, uh, I think we can skip this definition and proceed to the notion of semi-smoothness star. I use here actually a different definition in order to avoid introducing the so-called directional limiting co-derivative, which was used in the talk of Helmut to introduce the semi-smoothness star property. So this definition looks as follows. 
given a point x tilde from A, we say that the set A is semi-smooth star at this point, provided for every epsilon positive, there is some positive delta, such that this estimate holds true for all points X from a delta neighborhood of the point X tilde, and for all elements X star, and this is important, here we compute the limiting normal cone to A, not at the point X tilde, but at the point X. So to each X, we assign the corresponding limiting normal cone, and this uh, gives actually uh, the X star must come from this limiting normal cone. And uh, okay, you, you see this uh, relationship, this inequality, two can be replaced by such a condition in terms of the small o function. Now, <clears throat> the, this concerns sets. And uh, we also need uh, the notion, this notion for multifunctions. And uh, this can be done in a standard way by, so given a point X tilde, Y tilde from the graph of F. So uh, we say that F, this multifunction is semi-smooth star at this point, provided the graph of F is semi-smooth star at this point in the sense of, of the first definition. And if you write out this uh, requirement in the same way as in the first definition, you get now such an estimate, but it is sufficient to, <clears throat> to know that uh, the semi-smoothness uh, of mappings is derived as usually in the variation analysis via the same property of its graph. So you may have seen this, this picture, it was this figure, it was produced by Michael Mandelmeier, and it shows that uh, actually the semi-smoothness star, it's not a very restrictive property, so it's automatically full, so it's automatically fulfilled in all points uh, in the interior of this heart. It is also clear that it holds at, at these boundary points where, where the boundary is smooth, or here, here it is non-smooth, but regular in the sense of Clark. And even in this point, which is a non-regular point in the sense of Clark. Later, I will uh, present two simple rules of the calculus, which will explain why it is so. And uh, here we have an example of a mapping whose graph is not semi-smooth star at zero, zero. So to say it's a standard function, <clears throat> x squared times sinus one over x, which is used very often in variation analysis to demonstrate uh, various uh, properties. Okay, and uh, now concerning the calculus, we know, for instance, it is easy to prove that uh, each uh, that a, co a convex set, if A is convex then this uh, set is semi-smooth star at each point. And uh, if you have a set A, which is given in this disjunctive way described, so it's a union of some sets AI. And if you are sitting in, in a point X bar and these sets AI where X bar is, you know, uh, uh, lying in them, and all these sets are semi-smooth star at X bar, then the whole set is semi-smooth at, at X bar. And this explains the situation with the heart, because this heart can be expressed as the union of two half hearts, and both of them are convex. So 
that, that's, that's the reason. And finally, uh, we have a very uh, strong statement of Abderrahim Jurani from 2007, saying that if A is the closed subanalytic set and X bar is a point from A, then A is semi-smooth at a star at this point, which shows that in fact, the, the class of uh, semi-smooth star uh, sets is fairly broad. And this will also be used later. Fine. And uh, in fact, the notion of semi-smoothness star is of course not new. We, we were looking in the literature later and it turned out that uh, the semi-smoothness of sets, semi-smoothness star has been introduced already in an old paper by René Henrion and myself uh, published, in, published 20 years ago approximately. And concerning mappings, uh, one can find uh, this definition, uh, I, I mean now single valued mappings uh, in a paper by Gouda from 2004. And in fact, uh, the difference between when we restrict ourselves to, to Lipschitzian single valued mappings, the, then the difference of semi-smoothness star to, to the semi-smoothness of uh, Li Chunqi and Jia Sun is not very substantial because the difference is described here. And uh, in fact, uh, it is not so easy to construct an example of a Lipschitzian mapping, which is semi-smooth star at the point and not semi-smooth but it's possible. Okay, so let me proceed to the main part of the talk and I will first describe uh, the method. I recall that uh, we aim to solve such a uh, <clears throat> inclusion and uh, assume now that we are uh, sitting at a point XK corresponding to the case iterate and we are sufficiently close to the solution X bar. X bar is now and later always the solution of our generalized equation, of our equation, uh, inclusion, excuse me. Of course, it may happen. The situation is different uh, or rather different from uh, if in the in the case, if F is a Lipschitzian single valued mapping, we don't have any problems of this kind. But now it may happen that even if XK is quite close to X bar, then this set may be empty or this set may be very far from, from uh, uh, I mean, the distance of fxk uh, to the point 0xk or xk0, it, this distance may be large. So at the beginning, one needs to re return somehow to the graph of the mapping capital F. And this is done by the so-called approximation step. I will describe later how one can do this. And now we use the definition of the semi-smoothness property. And uh, you see, thanks to this property, which is assumed to be valid at the solution, you have such an equality written here. This is exactly the definition which I have presented before. And now, of course, what one can do, we, we can approximate uh, the multivalued part, which means this F here, by neglecting this O term here and uh, compute the next iterate as a solution. So X bar is replaced by some X and this will be the solution 
of this equality here, this one. And uh, of course, uh, in the definition, uh, we can find, according to the definition of the limiting co-derivative, we can find n pairs of uh, elements, y i star, x i star, from the graph of the limiting co-derivative. And this we indeed need, because here we have this uh, equation is a scalar one. We need more elements in order to be able uh, to compute the next iterate. And uh, of course, we also need some regularity, which you will see next. So we solve this equation here in terms of x, and this x will be our next iterate. Fine. Now, this uh, can be, this procedure, this, uh, this idea can be formalized as follows. So we construct, so given a point x, y in the graph of F, we construct these two matrices A and B, n times n matrices, having this property for all i's from one to n, in such a way that the i's row of A amounts to x i star and the i's row of B amounts to y i star. So this gives rise to the set A rec. And uh, this uh, A rec, uh, excuse, excuse me, A. A is the set of all such matrices A and B. And A rec is a subset of this set in which we impose additional assumption, namely that the matrix A is non-singular. This is needed in order to be able to resolve this Newton step equation and get the next iterate. Okay, and the problem is written here actually in a simple form. So the next iterate is computed from the previous one by uh, solving this equation. Now, of course, the crucial question is uh, whether the set A rec of these two matrices I mentioned, if it, uh, it is non, when it is non-empty. And uh, from the very beginning, actually we knew that if F is strongly metrically regular at, at the point X hat, Y hat from the graph, then this set A rec is indeed non-empty. It contains, for instance, uh, uh, such a special case in which the matrix A amounts to the identity matrix. So this is, a, of course, a nice simplification. But we knew that this condition is actually too restrictive. It can be substantially weakened. And uh, right now we, uh, we <coughs> will publish a new paper in which one finds a, another much, much weaker condition than the strong metric regularity. Okay, and uh, this is a conceptual algorithm based on these ideas. So starting with a certain point x0, we test whether we are sitting in the solution or not. If not, we perform this approximation step and here I also write only vaguely uh, this closedness mentioned here will be specified later. This is the Newton step. Then we increase the counter by one and loop. So it's quite simple. And now concerning the convergence, we, we uh, will make use of, of this set capital or script G, uh, actually with four parameters. L and kappa are positive scalars. F is the given multifunction and 
X bar is the solution. And this set, it is the set of uh, quadruples given in this way. So X hat and Y hat are elements which we assign to X in the approximation step. And A and B are matrices which we assign to X hat Y hat in the Newton step. And we require that first these two conditions are fulfilled. So the, the first condition actually describes how precise must be this approximative projection in the approximation step. And of course, this is a natural requirement uh, requiring that the uh, new pair X hat, the outcome of the approximation step X hat Y hat indeed lies in the graph of our multifunction. And these two conditions, they, they uh, are imposed on the Newton step. So of course, naturally, these two matrices must belong to the set A rec. And in, a, in addition, one needs such an estimate where the norm with subscript F stands for the Frobenius norm. Okay, and so this was, I apologize, a little bit complicated definition of this set, but now we can state the uh, convergence statement in a simple way. Namely, we assume first that at the solution point, this one, uh, the, the multifunction F is semi-smooth star. And for every X, which is close to X bar and not a solution of our general, of our inclusion, there exists these two reals, capital L and kappa, such that this set is non-empty, this G capital uh, script G set. And if this is so, then we claim that there is some delta positive, such that uh, wherever we start our Newton method, uh, in such a way that the zero iteration belongs to a delta ball of, of the solution. Uh, the, al the conceptual algorithm one either stops after finitely many iterations or produces a sequence which converges super linearly to X bar. Of course, we have, we have at every iteration, in, we have to choose to, to perform the <coughs> approximation step and the Newton step in such a way that this relationship holds. Okay, here I illustrate a little bit this approximation step showing that if this is our case iterate, and this is the solution of course, so we project this point here onto the graph of our multifunction in such a way that the blue line segment, the length of the blue line segment can be estimated uh, linearly in terms of the red, of the length of the red side <coughs> line segment. So actually this uh, projection needn't be too, too accurate. Okay, and uh, Concerning uh, the choice of uh, matrices A and B, in many cases, we can find matrices, these matrices A and B in such a way that the range space of, of uh, this uh, co matrices composed from A and B belongs to the graph of, <clears throat> of the limiting co-derivative. And if we indeed uh, find such matrices which uh, fulfill this stronger condition, then uh, it, we can uh, introduce a certain subset of the former set A, lin, uh, a and it is the 
noted here by Aileen, and this is a counterpart of the former set AREC. And then in terms of these two sets, the, the convergent condition in the Newton step can be actually weakened because it suffices if we choose, so if we cho choose A and B from this smaller set, then the convergence condition in the Newton step can be simplified to requiring just that this norm here is limited in such a way. And again, uh, it holds that if our mapping F is semi-smooth star at, at the solution point and strongly metrically regular around this point, then uh, the, the convergence statement, I mean, not this one, but the previous one uh, is fulfilled. Of course, this one as well. And uh, strong regularity can be weakened a lot. <clears throat> so let me, move to the, proceed to the application part of the talk. And uh, the situation is as follows. So we have such a prism in the, uh, three dimensions, which is where this blue face of the prism is firmly attached. So very clear boundary condition. Uh, these green faces are exposed to some surface tractions and the white face here, this uh, gamma C, it, it is in possible contact with a certain rigid obstacle, which is here depicted in red. So after the, the, the forces press this prism against this obstacle, the, the shape of the, this prism may change in such a way. Yes. And uh, here, the, of course, the front faces in both these figures are not visualized. So this is the problem in roughly uh, description. And uh, in fact, uh, <clears throat> Mechanical problems of this type have been studied, of course, a lot, and uh, they are partially, uh, partly connected with a big uh, or well-known Czech mathematician, Jindřich Nečas, who uh, was dealing with this type of problems uh, as one of the first uh, mathematicians very deeply. And uh, so, we will discretize, of course, our problem using a standard finite element discretization and eliminate all nodes which are not lying in the contact boundary. This can be done by a standard full complement technique. And so in, finally, we restrict ourselves just to these nodes in gamma C. And uh, as variables, we will consider the displacements of these nodes. So UTI stands for the tangential displacement of the node, which is two-dimensional. And UNJ uh, corresponds to the normal displacement. And uh, there are also quite different models based on dual variables, which means stresses in mechanical terms. And they are also, also mixed models in which both the stresses as well as the displacements arise. But we, our model, as I said, is a primal one. And we, we so our main, our variable, it will be composed from these tangential uh, and normal displacement in such a way. And in order to simplify the notation, so U12 uh, denotes a two-dimensional vector corresponding to the <coughs> tangential uh, displacement. And 
So by reducing the number of nodes uh, to the contact boundary and uh, specifying our main our variable, we arrive finally at such a generalized equation in which P is a square matrix. Small p stands for the number of nodes in the contact boundary. And uh, this matrix, capital P, can be computed from the original stiffness matrix, which corresponds, of course, to the material from which our prism has been produced. And uh, this vector f here, it corresponds to the action of these surface tractions. And finally, this multifunction Q tilde is uh, a Cartesian product, is the Cartesian product of much simpler uh, multifunctions. In fact, uh, this multifunction has a separable structure, which is important for the application of, the, of our Newton method. And these multifunctions Q have exactly such a structure. So we have two, say, multi-value terms here. First, this is the subdifferential of uh, the norm of the Euclidean norm in R2. And here we have the standard normal cone to the non-negative real line. And uh, small phi is the friction coefficient. It is a positive scalar. And we observe that this Q, which is a multifunction from R3 to R3, has, has such a composite structure where the, the first multifunction is given in this way here, and the second one in that way. And uh, since we dispose with a fairly rich calculus of limiting normal cones and co-derivatives, uh, everything can be computed exactly in this case. And of course, we also uh, make use of the fact that uh, this separable structure, this separable structure of the multifunction Q tilde enables us to express the limiting co-derivative of it as a Cartesian product of the co-derivatives of this single multi smaller dimensional three-dimensional multifunctions Q. Okay, and. Uh, Everything can be nicely documented or illustrated in mechanical terms because the graph of Q uh, amounts to such a union of six sets, each of which has a clear mechanical meaning. So for instance, if we consider this set M2, so uh, we have uh, the, the regime, the mechanic, underlying mechanical regime is uh, sliding and weak contact, which means that the respective node is sliding, moving, and uh, uh, the, the node is in a weak contact with the boundary, which means that the corresponding Lagrange multiplier, which looks for the contact condition or which is associated with the contact condition is zero. So this is this M2 set. And similarly, for instance, this M3 plus, here we have strong sticking, which means that the uh, uh, node doesn't move and it is in, in a strong contact with the uh, <coughs> obstacle meaning that the corresponding multiplier is positive. And three from these six sets actually have a special position, which I will describe next. Uh, they have a, say, better stability properties. So here at this slide, 
I, I collect the most important properties, uh, which we, which will also be, which will of course be needed. So, the first property is the following: if capital, if this friction coefficient is sufficiently small, then we indeed have the strong metric regularity at any solution of this one. And uh, this has been proved by Jaroslav Haslinger uh, about 10 years ago, approximately in a joint paper devoted to, to <clears throat> shape optimization of such problems. And now this is the stability property of these three sets. Uh, and uh, it looks as follows. So having a having a, a pair u bar g bar uh, from the for for instance this set l and uh, if uh, u and g belongs to a certain neighborhood of this original reference uh, pair of course it also lies in the graph of q then we immediately conclude that this uh, close point U and G also belongs to L. And uh, the same holds true also in the case of sets M1 and M3 plus. And, and finally, it can be proved that uh, <clears throat> the graph of Q as a semi-analytic set uh, is automatically semi-smooth star. Okay, here I write only that it is a seminar analytic set, but later it will be used to make this implication. And so let's proceed. I already announced that uh, since Q has such a nice structure and we dispose with a rich calculus for limiting objects, so all these co-derivatives can be computed exactly. So, so for instance, in the case of the set M1, it happens that the mapping Q is in fact a single valued smooth mapping. So that what we have here is nothing else than the adjoint Jacobian of Q. And uh, similarly, in the case of L and M3 minus, we get nice formulas. And this will be our actually, this will be needed in order to uh, implement the Newton step in this case. Okay, so let's move to the implementation. I already mentioned that uh, a lot of sets are uh, automatically semi-smooth star by this theorem of Jurani stating that each uh, semi-analytic set is a semi-smooth star. And so it is not difficult to show that the graph of the set, uh, graph of the mapping Q tilde is indeed uh, semi-analytic, uh, semi excuse me, sub-analytic. And uh, in fact, uh, last summer I have spent at least two months by trying to find a simple, not too long proof of, of this statement here about the semi-smoothness of the mapping capital F which, uh, excuse me, script F, which is given in this way. This is needed, of course, in order to implement the Newton method. But then uh, all my proofs were very long. But then we, we found this, uh, Abderrahim Shurani informed us about this possibility and in the, now the proof is a few lines long. And, uh, uh, in, our, in our implement, the implementation is based on the replacement of the original multifunction via such a 
enhanced multifunction script F. And the reason for increasing the number of variables lies in the fact that we can now actually uh, easily implement an efficient approximation step. So instead of the original variable u, we, uh, we work now with this pair u and d of variables from this Cartesian product. And we know that the semi-smoothness property is fulfilled by, by the mapping F. And now uh, in the approximation step, we solve consecutively these two simple optimization problems. The first one is just a univariate optimization. The objective is st strictly convex. Uh, so it's a very simple optimization problem. The second one is has two, uh, two variables, but it also has one, one also have a possibility, one also has a possibility to solve it by a formula. Both these problems can be solved via a formula very quickly and very precisely. And so we solve these problems and then co compute the outcome, which means the projection, the approximate projection of the approximation step by using such an update. So the update uh, that projected u, u hat is exactly amounts to the original one, but the projected d is composed in this way, and this is the projected y hat. So, and it is easy to show that uh, this uh, triple u hat, d hat, y hat indeed lies in the graph of the script f multifunction. And moreover, there is some positive real L such that this needed uh, estimate indeed holds true. And uh, our Newton step is actually based on a very simple observation. Uh, namely, consider for instance, a multifunction whose graph is depicted here in blue. So it's a union of three sets. The first one is this one, then this vertical line segment, and then this horizontal line segment. And of course, it's immediately clear how the normals to uh, look like. And uh, so we can actually distinguish between if our graph, now, now we consider a general multifunction capital lambda and assume that its graph has such a disjunctive structure and these components have such a property, belongs to one of the following group. Either uh, they, uh, the dimension of the affine hull is less or equal n, n is the dimension of the, <coughs> of the space and uh, or uh, th this uh, uh, the set AI uh, admits such a representation where Psi, capital Psi is a C1 mapping and uh, this matrix C corresponds to a certain change of coordinates. And in this way, you can indeed th this conditions are fulfilled here in, in this example, but it's fulfilled also in many other cases, including our Coulomb friction model. And then such yes, as- uh, I'm sorry, you have about five minutes left. Oh, okay, so I, I skip the details. Uh, I just tell you that uh, according to uh, this proposition, you can indeed construct the matrices A and B finally uh, in the Newton step very efficiently. And uh, this leads 
to the matrices A and B needed in the Newton step as uh, which are constructed as follows. So A is identity matrix. This was already announced because in the strongly regular case, indeed, uh, this choice for A is available. And of course, we, had to, we have to compute the corresponding matrix P. And in our case, this is given in such a way where the matrix D uh, has such a structure. So it, in each node, we construct the matrices G, for instance, in the first one, the matrix is G1 and H1, and finally get such a block diagonal matrices, capital G, capital H, compose from them the matrix D and invert it. So of course, we do not make any inversions. We just solve a special, solve a <clears throat> appropriate linear equations in the Newton step. And uh, this D is indeed uh, invertible thanks uh, to the strong regularity, which is assumed and proved to be present in our, in our mechanical problem. And stopping rule very easy uh, on the basis of this Y variable, and finally, quickly to the numerical tests. So this is a similar example like I have presented at the beginning, but uh, we have solved much uh, larger problems in terms of the uh, discretization being performed. And uh, the results are collected in this table so here at the left side, in the left column, you see uh, something giving us how fine our discretization is. So uh, in this case, we have to do with 70,000 variables, uh, nodes in the whole prism and 2,000 nodes on the contact boundary. And uh, Newton implemented new semi-smooth star Newton method worked well in all these cases. And uh, we have compared it with, uh, with uh, available algorithm, which we in fact used al already many years ago, but at that time we, we didn't dispose with this one. So the semi-smooth star Newton method was approximately 20 times faster. And this is uh, show. This shows that we indeed have to do with a superlinear convergence, because uh, this is of course a small problem, but we needed nine iterations to reach uh, a very high accuracy uh, of, of the solution. And uh, I come to the conclusion. So. <clears throat> Uh, let me just uh, point out that uh, everything could be uh, could be uh, implemented very easily. We also actually improved some parts in order uh, not to, to globalize the method the method and also uh, we were able to solve uh, some problems in which, uh, this friction coefficient was not small enough. So we, uh, the, the problem was not strongly metrically regular. Nevertheless, uh, the, the uh, Newton method worked well. And uh, finally, we hope uh, to, to uh, actually to weaken the imposed conditions, which would open some other application area. And my, my thanks go to these guys here who helped me in order to make various comparisons. And for instance, Tomasz Ligurski, he was uh, very active in following what happens if the friction coefficient increases the, the strong metric regularity uh, is lost. 
and what uh, what uh, what is the impact of this on the behavior of the semi-smooth star Newton method. I think that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Yuzi. Perfect, perfect time. Discussion. Do you have uh, questions, comments to the speaker, please? Just unmute yourself and ask questions if you have any. Janus? Yeah, excuse me. So uh, what does the globalization look like? Um, what would be a globalization strategy here? Okay, actually, the current globalization strategy is very simple. We, we use the line search and uh, choose a appropriate uh, merit function, which depends on the problem in question and uh, per perform just a line search. This was our strategy. So it's like dampening. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Um, and it seems to me that the, um, that the source of the multivaluedness is this uh, sub-differential, is that right? Exactly. Um, and but I have... I, I, the, the subdifferential and of course also the normal cone, which means the subdifferential comes from the friction. Yeah. And the normal cone comes from the non-penetrability condition. So of course the, the obstacle it's a unilateral constraint. So both yeah. these phenomena uh, cause or imply the multivaluedness. Yeah, okay. Um, and so when you globalize, so your aim is to get into the region where you have this, where this set G is working well, right? This, this yes. Uh, yes. big G. Okay. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much then. It was a pleasure. More questions, comments? Is a... Uh... A small question concerning the terminology, this semi-smooth star. I know that uh, this stuff has already been published. Has there been any criticism of semi-smooth star? Really? I don't know. <laughs> no, no, I'm just asking. So uh, the reviewers were happy with the terminology, right? Actually, the reviewers were not very happy with the first version of our paper, and it took quite a long time to to. Yeah, uh, this, this the happens. Paper but um... but uh, uh, curiously, a semi smooth star as a terminology was not criticized. Uh, I'm asking this question because. Uh, Looking at the definition which you gave, uh, it, it looks very natural to me. Actually, more natural than the predecessors. And I'm just wondering if you would be brave enough just to call it semi smoothness without star, with proper comments about the predecessors, and uh, that's it. Okay, uh, maybe our point of view is now a little bit different than- It is different, I understand. But uh, as I said, it is natural. It would be possible uh, with, with some explanation, et cetera, explanations, et cetera. Yes, I, I agree. But Are you going the, to be sufficiently brave to do it? Uh, it depends, of course, also on my quarter, and ah, I, yeah. okay. I cannot say anything. But, but on the other hand, at the very beginning, you remember the, uh, the origin of this property. It was our joint paper about uh, uh, stability of the subregularity uh, property, and uh, in this paper, in a different, con completely different context. The, the, a condition occurred which gave rise later as uh, to, to the original definition of our semi-smooth star property. And from the very beginning, we have seen it's something different. When reduced to the uh, case of Lipschitzian 
single value mappings, it's different from the semi-smoothness introduced by Robert Mifflin, of course, first for uh, uh, functionals and later uh, to, with respect to the definition of uh, Li Chun Chi and Jie Sun. So, the uh, so we wanted to, to somehow make clear that it's something different. But, but yeah, this is understandable, but uh, some people might uh, hesitate to accept those stars and other symbols. Uh, Dieter has a question. Dieter Glatter, please. Uh, hello to Josie. Hi, Dieter. Everybody. <laughs> I think in this discussion about the notion, uh, I remember that uh, there are also notions like Newton differentiable by Kunisch and Hintermüller for semi-smooth functions, which are not necessarily uh, directionally differentiable. Or we use with Bernkoma also the notion of a Newton map. Or uh, this is, uh, of course, reduced to the case of semi-smooth star functions. You, of course, work also with semi-smooth star sets. And uh, this is uh, maybe also uh, really a, a new uh, connection between sets and functions. This is only more command than, uh, than a question. I, I fully agree. And in fact, uh, Defeng Sun uh, showed me another paper, interesting one, from Gouda. Uh, yeah, in, yeah. More, uh, more, about more. age differentiability. And in this context, he also introduces something which corresponds to your Newton map or uh, to, mm -hmm. to the notion of semi-smoothness star for, uh, however, Lipschitzian mappings. Yes. Yeah, of course. In, so, and this paper by Gouda was published in 2004. So it's oh, also, so, so, so I think there are several sources of say, semi-smoothness star for Lipschitzian mappings or for single-valued mappings. And, uh, but uh, I think concerning sets, the, the first uh, definition uh, came from our paper with René in, in 2001. Yeah, yeah, that's true. OK, thank you. More, more questions, comments? Dietrich, you, you, your hand is still up. Do, do you want uh, to? No, 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 I don't know. <laughs> how, how to? <laughs> so it is to, up forever. <laughs> <laughs> now okay. it is a greeting. Forever, yeah. <laughs> okay. Any more hands or questions, live comments? If not, oh, now, now we have two hands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is my hello. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, okay, in this case, uh, thank you very much, Yuzi, for this nice presentation. It also went well technically. You were worried, I know that, but you saw now you are a professional in terms of presenting via Zoom. And Definitely not, but. <laughs> Okay, one or two more presentations at our seminar and you will be a professor. If no more questions, uh, thanks also to the audience. And uh, please come again next week, I think the same time. Thank you. Meeting is closed. <laughs>